from the possibility of us living in the sixth mass extinction to what the universe is mostly made up of, all the way to slime mold that has a mind of its own, despite it not having a mind at all. Here are the top 10 dark secrets that have scientists concerned. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have mass extinction. Paleontologists have been able to identify five different points in the history of the Earth where they believe that, for whatever reason, there have been mass extinctions where many, or sometimes even even most species were eliminated. Not only does this make me wonder what the Earth looked like in all of its different stages, but it also makes me question when the next one is going to be. As it turns out, however, we might currently be in the midst of one. In the past, the reasons for these mass extinctions have been things like asteroid impacts, volcanic eruptions, changes in the atmosphere, but this time it might be something different. According to biologists today, we are in the middle of the sixth mass extinction, and it started with mass Mastodons being some of the earliest victims. From there, as the early humans moved from continent to continent, large animals that had been there and thriving for millions of years began to suddenly disappear. After the mastodons, it was the giant kangaroos in Australia, then the dwarf elephants in Europe, and the list just continues on. What is the common denominator in all of these? Well, humans, of course. Humans are driving this modern extinction with our habits of hunting, destroying habitats, introducing invasive species species that throw delicate ecosystems off balance, and of course, spreading disease. This is of course of concern to scientists because who knows what our world will look like on the other end of things. I mean, as if we don't pollute the earth enough, Elon Musk is now polluting our sky and our orbit, so who knows what's next and who knows when we'll stop. In our number 9 spot today we have dark energy. Astronomer Edwin Hubble, whom the Hubble telescope is named after, in the 1920s made the discovery that the universe is not static and it is in fact actually expanding. He was studying a supernova when he realized that the universe was not only expanding, but was expanding at a much higher rate now than it was a long time ago. This discovery was groundbreaking because prior to it, scientists believed that the gravity of matter would end up at least slowing the expansion of the universe, if not cause it to contract. Since this switched up everyone's way of thinking so much, there then began to be the debated topic of dark energy. This is the idea that there is an inexplicable force that is pulling the cosmos apart at speeds that are only increasing. Dark energy is said to make up 73% of the universe, but we still haven't been able to pin it down and directly detect it. Basically what I'm saying is we're pretty sure it's there, but we have no idea what it is. So. That's a little terrifying. In our number eight spot today, we have our brains. Our brains aren't really ours, no matter how much we'd like to pretend they are. Perhaps that sounds a little more daunting than it actually is, but what I mean is that a lot of our behaviors, our emotions, and our beliefs are influenced by factors we don't even realize. It's like how everyone is happier when the weather is nice and sunny. Even if it's still cold, re-Canada, just a cloud-free day changes a lot. Or like how when doing a taste test, you're more likely to prefer whatever the very first thing you tried is, even if the rest of the samples are exactly the same. Or like how a sneaky salesman simply gently nodding up and down to you while asking a question might make you more inclined to say yes to whatever deal they're offering you. You think you know why you're attracted to someone, but there's a chance it might actually just be their smell. Our memories aren't nearly as good as we think they are, and we often remember things incorrectly, even if we swear it's right. We misinterpret information all of the time based on our biases and our own preconceptions. We make generalizations that aren't right. What I'm trying to say is that what we think is reality is actually just our own reality that we've created in some ways. Perhaps this is just a biological mystery, but perhaps this means something larger. I mean, while this is a part of what makes life and makes interpersonal relationships interesting, there could be some more serious implications about this. Whether it's a judge or jury, a doctor's misdiagnosis, or about a hundred other things that I could think of, this is something that could be and likely is quite problematic especially since it's something we don't discuss very often. In our number 7 spot today we have age. How old can humans possibly age? 
It's an age-old question, literally. Over the decades, the average human lifespan has risen and it's seen an exponential rise in the last few centuries. For example, the global life expectancy at birth average for the 19th century was between 28 and a half years to 32 years old. That would mean in the 1800s, I'd have less than 10 years left. I'm basically a grandmother at this point. In our day and age, I have to listen to people way older than me tell me how little I know and how young and dumb I am. Here's where this leads to an interesting question. What is the oldest age a human can possibly reach? Is there a person who is alive right now who is going to be the first person to reach 150? Could people realistically live into their second century? And if so, what are the medical implications of this? Like if someone lived into their 60s in the 1800s, that would have likely been a way older looking and feeling 60 than what 60 years old is to us now, right? The technology and medicine to make this happen and extend the human lifespan is probably already in development, but if it becomes a possibility, this leaves a lot of unsettling questions to be answered, and those are the things scientists are already looking ahead at. In our number 6 spot today, we have dark matter. Okay, if dark energy and all the mysteries it holds weren't enough, now we've got dark matter to talk about and I'm sorry, but there's no more answers with this one. In the 1960s and the 1970s, scientists began to hypothesize that there might be more mass in the universe than we can see. After this, an astronomer at the Carnegie Institute of Washington named Vera Rubin was studying the speed of stars at different locations within galaxies. What she found was that there was essentially no difference in the velocity of the stars, whether they were closer to the center of the galaxy or further out. This was an interesting discovery because that defied the most basic laws of physics, right? Like applying what we knew at that point, it would have made more sense for the stars on the outskirts of the galaxy to orbit more slowly than those at the center. In order to explain this, astronomers began discussing the phenomena of dark matter. It can't be seen, but it has a mass, which is how it's able to be detective because it exerts some sort of gravitational pull on regular matter. Dark matter makes up 23% of the universe, and if you remember from before, dark energy accounts for 73%, so that leaves us with a whopping 4% of matter that we understand better and know more about, which is matter like humans, planets, stars, that sort of thing. The other 96% of what the universe is made of is one of space's greatest mysteries, and that's a kind Kind of terrifying thought, right? We have no idea what everything else is made up of. That's insane. In our number 5 spot today, we have Alzheimer's research. Many of us are familiar with Alzheimer's, but if you don't know, it's a neurodegenerative disease that causes dementia, and despite decades of research, there currently isn't a treatment for it that has been found to be highly effective. For a long time, there was a theory that suggested that Alzheimer's was actually caused by a pileup of protein called amyloids, which then creates a plaque in the brain, but because of the fact that treatments that are used to help clear the amyloids don't seem to work very well in terms of combating the disease, it is thought that now this might have been an incorrect theory. Researchers now think that their attention is better focused on other potential causes like viral infections. Now people think and are concerned that all of the research of Alzheimer's might have been focused too much on that one theory which has set the research back and cost them valuable time. This might be true and hopefully one day when we do learn about how to effectively combat the disease, we'll understand just how much of a waste it really was or wasn't, but I also think that when it comes to medical research, is any of it really waste? I mean, knowing what is not causing it is definitely a step in the direction of finding out what is causing it. In our number 4 spot today, we have bacteria resistance. There are an array of antibiotics and vaccines that have been created that have not only helped us survive as a human race, but have also improved our quality and length of life. This is all amazing and truly helpful, but the scientists who study things like this also made a scary discovery that while these treatments are doing great work, there are some microbes who are working just as hard, and they might be evolving faster than we can fight them. This is why the flu shot is created yearly, as the previous previous shot is ineffective against the next year's bug, or why hospitals are seeing some people have a simple cut turn into a potentially limb or even life-threatening situation because of antibiotic resistant staph bacteria, or how there are illnesses jumping from animals to humans, or even how tuberculosis is seemingly making a comeback. These kinds of discoveries are extremely important because it helps us calculate next steps, but it's also incredibly frightening because while we might still be ahead for now, 
how long is that gonna last? There's a chance that the bacteria is going to catch up to us and we won't be able to get back ahead of it. And remember how we were talking about how low the average lifespan was not that long ago? Yeah, well we can thank antibiotics in part for helping us expand that, and you can infer what would happen if the bacteria overcame our medical advancements. We'd all die, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> In our number three spot today, we have ball lightning. Okay, I'd never heard of this before, and now I am simply dying to see it. But truthfully, I probably never will. For the last millennia, apparently there are some people who are telling stories about these mysterious balls of light that glow and crackle and basically hover there creepily during thunderstorms. Yeah, I want to see a glowing orb. I am so jealous. These glowing balls have been seen by people in their homes, on airplanes, apparently some have even seen them passing through windows. While my first thought is of course aliens, I mean a thunderstorm seems like a perfect time for them to visit, scientists think that these ball lightning are actually more terrestrial than I'm thinking, but despite that they are the most mysterious weather phenomena on the planet. Ball lightning usually only appears for a few seconds, but here's the thing. It's impossible to predict when and where it will show up. You don't choose ball lightning, ball lightning chooses you. It's quite rare, but people and scientists alike have experienced it. It's been attempted to be created in labs, but no one can figure out the exact formula that creates it, so I'm gonna continue on with my original theory of aliens. In our number two spot today, we have, how will the universe end? Perhaps it's a morbid question, but it's a good one. I mean, all good things must come to an end, and that might include the universe itself, but maybe it doesn't? I mean, we don't know. There are theories such as the Big Crunch, which suggests that the expansion of the universe, which has been ongoing since the Big Bang, will eventually slow to a stop, and then the universe will give way to the force of gravity, essentially just pulling everything. Planets, galaxies, all of it into a single dense point until everything is just wiped out. There are other theories out there, such as the Big Freeze, the Big Bounce, or the Big Rip, which sounds the most terrifying of them all, although I'm not particularly interested in any of these options so far. The good news is that this is all billions and billions of years away, so we won't be around to find out regardless. But when it does happen, it'll be a pretty spectacular event. Or maybe by that time the human lifespan will be so long that we will be around to check it out. Wouldn't that be a spectacular event? I don't think I'd want to live for billions of years though. In our number one spot today we have slime mold. No we are not talking about looking up slime tutorials on YouTube, we are talking about the strangely intelligent slime mold, more particularly asking, how is that stuff so smart? Basically they are single celled organisms, but they, and by they I mean many individual slime mold cells, can all fuse themselves together into one big mass that's capable of thinking? I put a question mark on that because I'm not sure if that's the right word, but I don't know what else you could call it. These masses can solve mazes, they can make risk versus reward decisions, and there's some evidence that suggests that slime mold just might be able to keep track of time. I have absolutely zero idea what tests could reveal that mold has some sort of internal clock, but it's said to exist. The reason this is so intriguing and captivating to scientists is because all of this is happening with no brain present. Not even a single brain cell. I'm glad to know I'm not the only one. However the slime mold is able to do this, it means that it has evolved in a way that is completely different from humans, which is a bewitching idea that leaves us both fascinated and kind of confused. How do they do this? What can this teach us about intelligence? And honestly, how does this even happen? If there's no brain, what is responsible for the ability to make these kinds of decisions? All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you all next time. Bye. That's so hard to say. <laughs> um, and it started with mas mastodons. Mastodon. Mastodon.